Technology startups face unique challenges in today's market. With more options than ever for customers to choose from, standing out from the crowd with your core product isn't as straightforward as it used to be. But sometimes it's the side product supplementing your core value proposition that can make all the difference. Today, we'll be talking about side product-led growth with an expert and founder on the strategy, Michael Novotny. Welcome to Momentum, a podcast by Jotform, where we talk about the technology, productivity tips, insights, and best practices that help us move forward in business and in life. Let's get started. Three, two, one, liftoff. We have a liftoff. Maintaining Momentum. All right, we are live. Uh, this is your host, Elliot, and I am here today with Michael, founder of Side Product Led Growth. Uh, welcome to the show today, Michael. Thanks for having me, Elliot. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome to have you here. Um, now, you're a proponent of side product led growth. You're even a founder of an initiative by the same name. Now, I can't wait to explore this more and to really dive into your philosophy around this strategy. But first, I'd love to start with a little bit more background on you and how you ended up having this really kind of unique platform and perspective in the industry. So, do you want to just give listeners a little bit of context about? About you and where you're coming from? Yeah, absolutely. No, no. Thanks for that. Um, and just to just to answer directly, it was by accident. Um, <laughs> so you know, if I were to backtrack almost 18 months ago, maybe a little bit less than that, um, I put a tweet out there just saying, "Hey, I like to help startups. Uh, I'm a zero to one type of builder, and I just that's where my passion is." And um, lo and behold, um, the uh, founder of Threado reached out to the DMs of Twitter and the, the magic of Twitter, uh, once again, strikes where, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can get connected to, pre, you know, all, all types of folks and opportunities can just kind of fall in your lap through Twitter. And he had mentioned kind of, hey, he wanted to launch this thing, uh, which was called Community OS. And what it was is basically just this giant resource uh, for helping uh, community managers. And he was he was preparing to, to launch his uh, startup called Threado. Uh, wasn't quite live yet, um, and he was just trying to to get a ton of momentum going with signups and early users um, in in that aspect. And um, so what we did is we I helped him create it. Um, and it was just just a simple kind of Notion dashboard with you know seven hundred resources. We launched on Product Hunt, um, had a thousand signups within twenty four hours, mm -hmm. and uh, number one Product Hunt of the day. And, Awesome. And uh, we were kind of blown away by that. And we said, yeah. well, actually, like, that was cool. Let's do yeah. it again. And uh, so then we, for, for every month from there on, uh, we launched eight more um, and grew um, signups, but, you know, uh, by seven, you know, seven, eight X uh, from just under a, a thousand um, and helped really uh, grow and have his first, you know, several uh, dozen users uh, and customers actually from discover his product through uh, the strategy where every month we were launching a new side product that added value for community managers in that space. And um, in this kind of give value first approach really was a magnet for people discovering a startup and then trying it signing up, um, which was huge for a SaaS-based product. So these were all products uh, associated with his his startup, but not per se. Like, what did what did what does Threado do? I guess I guess back up and paint the broader picture. Yeah. Uh, what does Threado do? And then, like, what's an example of one of these side products that that really helped to boost him? Yeah, absolutely. So Threado is a dashboard for helping community managers. Um, it, you know, uh, engage with their community through messages, through onboarding flows, uh, through analytics, and really also looking and help them find folk uh, community or members who are really getting a lot of value out of the community, so that they can find those and and, uh, and reach out to them and help them find whatever mm -hmm. they're looking for in the community. Uh, so that's what the product does, um, and, it's, and it connects to like your Slack or your Discord, sure, um, as well as uh, a few other integrations. Um, and so, um, basically, the, the the easy way to think about it is, um, and I give this analogy all the time as I'm working with startups, and I've worked with eight startups in the, over the past year, and we've launched 16 side products and helped them grow by over 50,000 new users and customers mm -hmm. just within the first month of, of launching those side products is where we measured 
um, is, is, you know, we really, I do a workshop with them and we just find out like, what is the problem that you're solving, mm-hmm. um, for your users or for your customers? And, and whatever that problem is, um, your user or customer or your, you know, ideal customer profile, whoever that is, is on a journey. They're just trying to get from point A to point B. They don't, they want to get that problem solved as easily, as frictionless as possible. Right. And mm-hmm. hopefully as, as you know, uh, least costly as possible. And so your, your product is along that journey from point A to point B. And usually when you're first starting out, you're just solving one of many problems, uh, for them to, you know, get to where they're going to, to, um, solve the jobs to be done. And uh, as a startup founder, you can't always build everything along that journey. And so that actually becomes, uh, the opportunity, you know, before that might be paralyzing because you think I have to build all these things for, to get adoption of my, my SaaS product or whatever startup it is. And actually that's a fallacy, right? Start small, mm-hmm. start solving one problem and expand from there. But all of those tangential problems along that journey become opportunities for side products. And so those are small things that you can build. And with the power of no code, you can do that easily within 30 days, launch it as a, as a cheap experiment. You don't have to use engineers on your team or distract them. It could be a product person. It could be a marketing person that creates this and solves that, that problem. And, and really you're getting a lot of times you give away for free, um, to help really give value first to your potential target customers. And the, the key here, it's sounding like it, is it has to be a supplement to your, your core product. It's essentially removing one of one more technology in the technology stack that so many of us need these days. I mean, I got a list of subscriptions like my company Jotform uses, and it's like dozens and dozens of subscriptions. But if we take one of those products and they suddenly offer another couple more products um, affiliated with theirs that can remove a couple of those subscriptions, like, oh, we don't need that anymore, um, you can kind of make your company more of the the one stop shop. It's sounding like um, from yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you can think of it smaller than that. And I know we'll, we'll get into a little bit, but like another one of my favorite examples is uh, Buffer. Mm-hmm. So Buffer, if you're, if you're not aware, it's a it's a social media scheduling tool, and um, that's what they do. And but one of their one of my all time favorite side products they launched was um, before Canva existed, uh, basically like a, a free microsite like Canva, where you can stitch together an image a quote and really make these really nice, um, type of social media type of posts. Um, and this, they launched this about seven, eight years ago. So what they did was essentially is they solved a problem for social media managers, which is I want to create engaging posts that look nice so that people can engage with my content. And that wasn't easy to do. Like before you might have used like Adobe or some other tool and they kind of like stitch all this together sure. a ton of time. They just created a, just a simple web app, um, that was on their domain that you could access for free. It's called Pablo, where you could just upload an image, grab a quote that they and put it all together, export it as a PNG. Bam! You now had a kind of a really nice, easy way to create um, a really nice image that you could use for your content. And then, oh by the way, when you're going through that experience and getting that value, you then discover what Buffer is. Mm. Now your your customer is open to like, oh, what is Buffer? Oh, Buffer can help me schedule my social media. Well, I just created a nice little piece of content. Let me just go try that with Buffer to solve my problem as a social media manager of managing the the calendar for content. So that's that's an interesting example because it sounds like you know their value add with that that product. It wasn't necessarily you didn't have to use the core product. You didn't have to use Buffer to use their free product. It was just a way to draw them into it. But you could just use the free product that they they created that scheduler and never use Buffer if you didn't want to. But they led super easily one into the other, which I think is interesting because exactly. yeah. like. Why would a company give away something that could be used as standalone for free? Like, I get if it's part of the I- integral workflow. Like, okay, now you can do this with your data, but you really you begin with the company itself and its core product. Like, we use forms that lead into tables or apps, but you know you have to fill out a form for that. For our example, but um, for other companies and for other stuff that we even do, we do have products that could be standalone. I guess from your perspective, uh, why do companies? Why would they not charge for something that could be completely standalone and add value on its own without ever even um, working back towards the core product? Is that a bit of a risk? Yeah, it's a risk, but it's also um, an opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, um, two things I would say. One is Buffer's written about this. It's driven millions of page views and visitors to their site. Mm-hmm. So how much would you pay for that? And you pay a lot. If right, if you're doing marketing and 
we all know advertising really doesn't work as well as just organic giving value for free, which is, right. you know, if you're paying for people to come there, um, we know the quality of the site visitor and the intent is in conversion is not going to be as high as people discovering something that's helping them along their journey. Um, and there's this mechanism, this reciprocal nature of um, getting something for free and getting value. And that opens me up to understanding, okay, what is buffer? Wow. Like, they, like it's just human nature to say, Hey, you give me something for free. Help me. Like, wow, that's amazing. Like that's different. That stands mm-hmm. out. That's, you know, marketing is to tell what your product does and adds value to someone. If that's the definition of marketing, just saying that loosely, what's the definition of great marketing? It's to stand out above all the mm-hmm. others and really attract more for uh, whatever whatever you're trying to do, right? And so that's the game of marketing is just standing out. So what are what are what are you know companies? What are you doing to stand out? Um, that's different from other folks to attract more people to whatever your product is because that's generally where the race is, the race of marketing, which is like standing out above the noise. And if you're creating a, a simple tool that's a free value that's helpful for them, that stands out because who else was doing that? Nobody, right? And it generated, and the proof is in the pudding, it generated millions of people mm-hmm. to visit their site. And they, they show their, their analytics and stuff and backed it up. Um, and I think you know, the key thing is, is, um, you can still charge money for this. It just depends on what is the amount of like the value that you're creating. Um, what is the problem source that you're at? Like I've seen people, you know, offer other services for like a discounted rate and maybe that just gets people in the door and then that's part of your sales funnel, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's, you don't have to give everything away for free, but what's, what's provocative is, is, um, at worst it's in, in the founder of, um, switchboard, I was talking with him, uh, some potential, uh, uh, Phil Lekin, um, some p- potential side products for them. And he stated it perfectly, which was, you know, side product like growth at, at its worst, it's, it's good marketing at best. You, you acquire customers. And if you're already spending money for, for marketing dollars, um, to attract people, um, everyone is going to be, and especially nowadays more than any other time, anyone can create content. Content, especially mm-hmm. with the advent of AI tools where you, you can eat. So the, so content is ubiquitous and it's becoming even greater of a problem going forward. How can you stand out if everybody's creating great content? Right? This is a kind of, I think, a new frontier uh, with the advent of no code tools that you could do this. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about like um, why now on side product like growth as opposed to like seven years ago and opposed to like seven years from now um, is, is why I'm really bullish on it. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a powerful perspective to imagine you know the side product led growth strategy as a form of of marketing because at, at the end of the day, as long as it is connecting to your product in in some way and it's driving those views to to your point, you could pay um, tens of thousands of dollars to get um, you know hundred thousand people to click through to your site, or with a no code tool, which would makes things super easy in today's terms. You can just uh, create something in a matter of weeks that is functional yep. and it really helps people out and that could be more impactful than than any advertising. So I think that to to your point it's pretty recent in uh, you know the overall span of, of time and startups and the internet that this became more feasible uh, with the advent of, of no code tools because before you know it is more of a risk when you would have to code everything yourself and you'd have to put a, pour a lot of resources into creating any other product um, in addition to your your core product and that it takes resources away from that and you know you have to really contemplate the the ROI and the break even on that but now, with these no code tools uh, it's it's a lot easier to create a product and just float it out there and if it gets you more traction uh, great so let's talk a little bit yeah. about um, I guess first and foremost differentiating a core product and a side product if we take sort of a, a broader perspective like no, normally a company's core product comes first that would be like drop forms form builder or that's the the first thing that they do at what point uh, would you recommend a company starts looking into to side product and, and what really differentiates it from its its core product yeah great question so I'll give you an example um, and also to just want to provide some feedback on what you just Mm-hmm. Paraphrase, I think you did it perfectly, in which is unless you have a, uh, you know, Joel is the founder of Buffer, um, and he was one of the first to openly share their job titles, job descriptions with open salaries. Hmm. Like eight years ago, that was super provocative, right? Yeah, you don't. And now this yeah. is kind of true, right? And even still, like a lot of companies don't do that, but now a lot more tech companies do. 
But that was really provocative back then, and that drove a ton of people there. So you had this very forward-thinking founder who understood the risk, and that's where I think before and even now you have to have it has to come top down because if you're a growth marketer or a PM and you try to you know say hey here's this experiment that we have to do um, and we want to use development resources to do it you're going to get shut down mm-hmm. because it's an experiment you don't know the value right. And so what we saw seven, eight years ago is companies who were very forward thinking and that in this approach came top down from the founders um, worked because, um, you know, uh, if you look at like HubSpot, Spotify and Buffer, like they've created 40 of these different side products that have launched. Like really? Spotify's created like 16, um, uh, HubSpot's done like a dozen, Buffer's done uh, a handful, not quite as much. Um, but they've done those, for, been doing those for years, and so they wouldn't keep on doing them if they weren't getting right. some value from them. Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, why, why, why did they? Well, they're very, and I think, kind of forward-thinking type of founders and organization, tech organizations, because you have to take engineering resources off of your core product, mm-hmm. which is a, a big, a big risk. And so now, what you can do is you don't, and, and why now is. You don't have to take engineering resources off of your core product because mm-hmm. you can develop it with no code. And so that's like why it's become like a game changer. But the answer, the second part is um, like, how do you differentiate between your core product and uh, potential side product? And I'll give you an example with Threado. This was um, the third product that we, third or fourth, I can't remember, that we launched. It was called Serendipity Bot. And what it was is we helped community managers um, match together folks in the community who had similar interests and to provide an introduction so that they can meet and connect, right? Um, Why well, I built this in, is with a no-code tool, Airtable, Zapier, and a few other things stringing it together. It took me about a week to put together, and we launched it. It was number two on Product Hunt, and mm-hmm. we got hundreds of people um, and thousands of people to sign up, but hundreds of people to actually download and actually use the tool. And what we did, what was interesting was this, is we said, hey, here's how you go create it yourself. If you'd like us to create it for you, schedule a meeting with us and we will then you know get your information we'll, we'll go through that and while we schedule a meeting we then use that as a as qualifying prospects for their for the core product right. um, because it's expensive to, to, to take 30 minutes of your time mm-hmm. and what we're able to do though is then we're able to ask questions about what we're building at Threado. Um, and we were also then able to actually get customers for the core product and, and sign them up and use it as a way as a kind of like a lead magnet um, and, and, and then what it also did was, is, you know, Pramod, the, the, the founder of Threado is he had this idea behind providing this tool within his core product, but it's really risky to build it. Right. right. And, well, what's a lot less risky, build a side product with no code that may not have the full feature functionality that you need for your core product, but you can give, validate the need for it. Right. You can True. validate and actually talk to customers to see like oh, in, in validation as in, do people actually download it? Do people, people actually use it. Um, and, and so you can then, uh, reduce your risk in your, your roadmap and your building. And for a startup, that's, that's, that's a game changer because you only have limited runway. Um, you may not have revenue yet. Um, and it's expensive to take these risks and you could be, you could be, you know, betting a farm on, on these types of, on t- these type of side products. Um, if you're using engineering resources when you're trying to figure out your product market fit and things like that, right? Because honestly, for for many no code products, like you know, as you as we've talked about, it's sort of a, a marketing tool. You can honestly just have someone in your marketing department make make a lot of these, like not an engineer. Exactly. Um, you know, allocate the exactly. funds to what it is, which is which is marketing in this way, and then and then when it is active and you actually have some analytics to point to, maybe then you could justify a more exhaustive build or developmental right. uh, time. And resources, so uh, I think that's that's really powerful uh, sort of proof of concept, and it kind of hits the point of the head. You know why the startup model is so different now than you know 10, 20 years ago um, with the advent of, of no code, obviously proliferation of the internet, and and all of that is because they can take risks without sort of taking risks. You can diversify more and have these these side-led products, and it doesn't cost you as much uh, as much revenue or stake in doing so, but that also clutters, uh, clutters the environment more. And 
with core products, there are so many just Yes. You type in form builder, you get 10 form builders. You, exactly. you type in uh, project automation, you get 10, 10 re- answers to that. It's so easy to create these days. And yes. to, to what your exactly. point about the, the content automation, it's just uh, you need differentiators. So it's actually using those differenti- differentiators to create more. It's just, it it's becomes a bit mind boggling, I think, when you think about it. Um, and when I log on to Product Hunt and see how many new products and awesome products products there are every day it's yeah. a it's a minefield so it's uh it's really cool that you know this strategy i think um, gives some clarity in how you can navigate that as a startup and sort of weaponize that and use it to your advantage even though you know um, at the face of things it almost looks like a disadvantage the fact it's so easy to do this um it's just changing well, the strategy hit, a bit yeah you hit the nail on the head which is like you know we've said this before right? You know, there's a fallacy if you build it and it'll come. And that's even more more so now. Like 10, mm-hmm. 20 years ago, you could might be able to get away with that um, because it was difficult to build a lot of the things. Right. Like even 10 years ago, like we forget, like 2013, like what that was like. You know, Airbnb and Uber were just like really kind of starting yeah. coming on as mass adoption, right? And like you could build Airbnb and Uber so easily. I could build it in a, in, in a couple of days with Bubble, right? Like, yeah. And so that just goes, and that, and that was just 10 years ago compared to now, right? And so like, you know, attention is the new oil. Building an audience is the new oil. How are you going to stand out that's different? And if you build it, like, who can, nobody cares because you can build it so easily, especially I'm seeing a lot of form builders out there as well. And so, like, from mm-hmm. the job form perspective, you know, having people's attention being top of mind, I think, is, is critical. Um, and so, um, you know, that's why I think, like, the strategy, especially with advent of no-code, is, like, so key for the next couple of years because no-code is still relatively new and it's also – it's, you know, yes, marketing and product folks can take this up, but if they don't already have the skill set to build a bubble, that there is a little, you know, few months of adoption of like learning curve for that. But um, if they like to build things, they, they can do that in their spare time or, or part of their, their project product. Um, but I think that's, that's the difference between like the startup model 10, 20 years ago is um, how difficult is distribution is much more important than actually building the thing. Um, and that's what's changed now. Um, and then it, with the advent of content, like, you know, storytelling, standing out, um, like our key uh, key concepts that I think in building side products I've seen is effective because that's what a lot of people aren't doing, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's that's kind of like a, you know catching on that trend and. And taking advantage of it, uh, I think, are, are really key right now for your startup. Absolutely. Uh, you you mentioned a few examples of already of companies who who have done this well, like uh, Buffer, HubSpot, Shopify. I had no idea Shopify had so many uh, product uh, side products. What what are a couple examples of those, just out of curiosity for for listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can find some of these on my website um, at sideproductlegrowth.com. I actually have a list of 200. I don't have all of them listed there. I need to get them on there. Um, but uh, there's a link in there that has, like, I think, like 20 or 30 listed. With Shopify, for example, like the problem that they're solving for is e-commerce, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you think about an e-commerce, like maybe you need uh, like a, uh, a like a tax calculator tool or something like that for different taxes or different rates for around the world or something like that. And so they, or like, uh, like a loan calculator tool, if you're a bank or something like that. So like those different types of tools, um, they have like, you know, scores, you know, created like all different little things like that. Um, and HubSpot, like they're, uh, one of their, th- one of the, my favorite ones that they've done that I think are, are really, really is really smart is their, their core, you know, user, uh, customer is in marketing, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, you know, you know, you know, that type of arena. And you're a lot of times you're sending emails, uh, and, and it's really kind of hard to create like a really nice signature. So what they did is they built a email signature tool that you can just plug in your information and then you can, you can then, you know, put that within your embed that within your email sends that you send out as a marketer. Right. And so it's, 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 those are like some like key things that they've built that I think are interesting, um, that are fun but also like not like a major, it's not a major product or feature it's going to take three months to build, even even if you did it with code, you know, it'd be something that's much smaller. Right, just a little value add, and, uh, right. you know, those things add up over time. And I guess it's right. obviously worth pointing out that the broader your field, for instance, e-commerce is a huge, that, that applies to so much, Every so many people right. need an e-commerce commerce platform. So that kind of broadens the umbrella and the horizon of different avenues you can go with side products, 
because so many people need different things that come to Shopify for that e-commerce reason. As opposed to if you're a little bit more of a niche or a specific product, you probably won't have quite as many options on the table, but right. you could still find a couple like really impactful ones, like like Buffer did for for example. So I think that's that's exactly. a good uh, thing to point out. Um, but also, hey, Elliot, one other thing too that I think you know. Um, a lot of these examples are high utility. So, like mm-hmm. the way I would think about it, if if you're a startup and you're you're a product or marketing and you you are founder and you're really excited about this, is like the, there's kind of like two categories. One is high utility, which we've kind of talked yep. about. Another one is like just something that's that's novel or something that's fun. And an example of that is a company called Party Round, um, and they um, they started off as Party Round and um, they cha- they changed and morphed into a. Uh, financial lending for um, uh, startups and the, eco- and the ecosystem of startups, but nobody knew that's what they were going to do. So what they did every month is they launched just like a fun side product that really didn't provide high utility uh, for that niche market. Like they created this one e-commerce, like s- just a simple site of like vintage, um, like uh, vintage like artifacts or things from 30, 40 years ago, like uh, sweaters or, or sweatshirts or like uh, like Nintendo, like original Nintendo kind of like artifacts, and you could like buy this. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's kind of like this kind of like, well, what's the what's the utility of that? And 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 they also created like um, like a, a web page that um, helps you like uh, if you're quitting your job, and you can like basically like kind of create like an AI WYSIWYG tool that like auto computes your resignation, and you could change like the um, the tone of your resignation based off of a lever that you had on the site and it'd be a lot easier if I could show you um, and so the, and they did this every every month and they accumulated over a hundred thousand uh, signups for their email list as well as hmm. all of their um, Twitter and LinkedIn handles and, and profiles and so what happened what they did was instead of like like trying to just sell you on the product, they just uh, gained attention. Um, they gained an audience. They gained a following and built that distribution line and pipe up. And then after about seven, eight months, they said, "Hey, party round is we're pivoting. Party round is turning into this this legitimate like financial um, lending app, hmm. and it's now we're re- rebranding." Well, now they had a they had their distribution pipeline already yeah. hooked up, and they had a hundred thousand people signed up for it overnight. And so it was. It was just mind blowing that type of you know kind of like forward thinking and and what they use as a way to generate people to sign up for their startup. Yeah, it's smart, and it's not. I, I wouldn't say that's um, manipulative because it's not like they are lying about uh, their their utility or their functions. Just like, oh, hey, by the way, we also do this now, so that's that's cool. Right. If anything, it's it's adding value. Um, I think that it's it's a good point that you know sometimes these can just be fun uh, little products like the little signature thing like that's probably not going to make or break somebody's day but just the fact that you can make an e-signature in a couple seconds and it, you can make it look cool and do different things like that that's the kind of thing that can be shareable and then maybe you get into the fact that you know you I don't want to use the word go viral, but you gain popularity for something totally different. And maybe it's not really related to your product hardly at all, but it's still, if it feeds back to your product somehow or you can still use it, um, you know, you take any any eyeballs that you can get at the end of the day. So, um, well, and I think I think a lot of the things like we described are short term value. And, we yeah. need, and, what, and one of the things that I was going to, that blew me away with ThreadO, and another example I'll talk about with Adobe. Is the long is the long term uh, pull of this is uh, is absolutely jaw dropping. For example, um, the SEO benefit that you can get from this is a is a total hidden secret right now. So, for example, like with Adobe, um, if you search like um, like converting a file uh, for like into a GIF or converting mm-hmm. a file into like some type of uh, basic file format into MOV or something like that, yep. and you type that into Google. Well, what will happen is Adobe will pop up in the, in the search rankings, and then you have to sign up to, to use this for free. Yep. And it, that's happened to and, me. And so, what's, yeah. And so, you've, and so, maybe you've seen it. And so, the reason why this is a game changer is because we've all tried like uh, file, like um, I forget the name of it, but like uh, changing the file type of, mm-hmm. of some of these like assets. And you've, we've all used like this website that looks like it's like really like. Uh, 
untrustworthy because it's yep. like kind of hacked together and and you're like i don't know if i'm gonna like if i use this and download something i'm gonna get a virus yep. on my computer yep and so adobe they said hey we're gonna give this away for free we're gonna when we know people are searching for this because they do some key, keyword intent and then they you're discoverable on the first page of google you sign up and then that gives you an opportunity to show you all the other the 30 other things that adobe does and then they charge money for those things because yep. they're they're higher up on the value ladder yep. and so that's another thing you can do as a startup is use it as a as you know as a, if you want if you're trying to come up with ideas is what are people searching for in and around your product provide something for that launch it on product hunt to get the initial juice for uh, people in traffic to your site and then, and then, uh, and then Google will rank that. And that's a, that's an incredible like kind of SEO strategy and tactic. To yeah. Use as I, well. I, I cannot agree more. Um, and with the advent, you know, who knows how this will be impacted with the advent of, of AI and, and all of that when it comes to when you're searching for solutions for things. But, uh, I think SEO is not going to go away anytime soon. And that's powerful because I have, I'm in school right now, I'm doing an online MBA and I have literally probably six times in the last year I've needed to do exactly that. And I've had to go to Adobe and enter my email address. And you think yep. it remembers me by now. It's probably like, oh, well, no value <laughs> add there. But uh, at the end of the day, yeah, I landed on Adobe because it doesn't seem sketchy. So um, I think that's right. a, that's a, that's an awesome example for, for how this can work for a company, a startup or not a startup. Um, but let's get into, I think we've proven the concept and the ideation. Let's get into a little bit um, how. If you are a startup, if you have pretty limited resources, um, but obviously maybe you have a marketing department, you have a no-code, uh, you have no code tools at your disposal. Um, what are some of the best ways to like uh, to use some of these no code tools to grow your business? What are some examples you've you mentioned like like Airtable, for example? Are there other tools that come to mind that are kind of what you'd recommend as the first stop shop for uh, startups looking to do this? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's a couple. I think on the lower end of like skill skill level, the sk you know skills that you need to learn. Um, which would be like using Typeform and Airtable and Zapier. Or Jotform, yeah, so are, Typeform. <laughs> Jotform, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Come on now, Michael. Uh, Jotform, I know, um, is, um, is using, Jotform would be a perfect use case for this. And so what you can do is setting that up and then creating conditionals based off of like inputs that people use and create an amazing lead generator form. Um, and with that form, then you can like send an email with like different response based off of um, what people put, put in, in their, their form. And, um, one of those examples is like with whale sync, um, which is a, it's an, um, automation tool that helps sync, um, your air table to Webflow or some, and some type of, uh, CMS, you know, website builder. Um, you know, we did this in that essentially we created this lead generator tool, um, that used a form. And then we then entered, uh, imported that data into Airtable. You can use job form for this as a perfect use case. And then uh, we then had some just some kind of basic formulas written in that I wrote in Airtable. And then uh, with Airtable, it, you can send emails. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a beautiful tool uh, that is really helpful. And so then you can basically create a customized type of like answer to whatever information they put in the form. Mm -hmm. And you can provide that immediately to them. But what you've done is you've, you've, gained, you've gotten their email address, which is you know a critical value right. add. That you can say in, 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 in you know, critical value capture, you can say as a marketer is you, hey, you know, we've grown our you know new users and email list by you know a thousand within a week because we provided this you know type of uh, lead generator for people, and then as you kind of get into it more, um, you know, a tool that I would highly recommend is Bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, you you know, is Bubble is absolutely perfect for this. Um, because you can, what you can do is you can build something in there, like a small calculator or a tool, then you can embed this on your a landing page of your website. Um, and so, um, or you could have it as like a standalone app, um, that people can access, um, as well. And, and so, um, those are just like, kind of like some of the tools that I would use, um, in, in when you're like trying to create, like, how am I going to actually create this? And that's something that we did at Threado with like the serendipity bot for the community, also, Notion is a really good tool mm -hmm. if you want to like create a giant resource, and that's just everybody loves giant resources. Like that's that's a it's a, some really low hanging fruit. Um, another one that like we we used for recently for one startup is they wanted uh, to create like a real time what's happening on Twitter app, mm -hmm. 
Um, and so we just used Bubble connected to the Twitter API and pulled in uh, data based off of certain hashtags and certain information. And so then we just embedded that with on their website. And so that's like some of the kind of like low hanging fruit ways uh, that we recently helped uh, startups grow. Yeah, that's uh, that's an awesome list. Um, some great resources that you that you named there. I think it's important to to know. You know, you can a lot of these are combinable. Uh, uh, at the face of it, you might just use Airtable for one thing or, or Jotform even for for one thing and a certain level of sophistication. But you can you know link Jotform to Airtable or integrate with Notion, yeah. and you can create exactly. something that looks very sophisticated between its uh, mm-hmm. its user value and its function from point A to point B. Uh, um, that you know the user might never even guess was no code, uh, depending on on right. how you're able to customize things. So uh, I think those are some some great resources that that you mentioned there. Um, so we've covered uh, a, a lot of ground here. Um, I guess if you sort of had to to summarize, um, you know, in just a few. A, a, a few thoughts. Why is side? Why are side products important? And do you think the absence of them is why startups fail these days? Like, do you think it's an absolute must-have? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think that um, if I was to answer with a quote um, from uh, Justin Kahn, who's the founder of Twitch. He um, said this so eloquently on Twitter, and, 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 and for folks who don't know what Twitch is, it's, it was basically a, a platform that was um, acquired by Amazon for almost a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. And what he said was, first-time founders fo- obsess over the product, second-time founders obsess over distribution. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, um, and especially now, like the, the barrier to entry is not building something. The, the barrier to entry is distribution. And so, um, it, you know, what is it that you're going to do that's going to stand out to get users and customers? And um, I think it's an absolute uh, growth hack right now to use side product like growth to create these, these small tools or resources um, and then launching them on there because of two reasons. And what we saw with Threado that was the most uh, surprising thing was this, is uh, we accidentally used a strategy uh, defined by uh, RFs as basically like a PR linking strategy, which is like, hey, why is it valuable to get linked or referenced um, by journalists like the New York Times, right? Mm-hmm. Well, because that type of attribution, Google, that kind of link back, Google values very highly, right? It's, right. A, it's a good indicator that that's a valuable piece of content. Well, essentially, you know, you can hack your way through that with uh, launching a product hunt or launching into other communities and having people link to that information. So, if one example is um, I created um, a, a product, I co-created a product called AI Social Bio, and basically we built it with Bubble. This is an example of a side product. Um, we built it with Bubble, and we built it with the Twitter API, and that's it. And all we did was we pulled in, um, and what the product does is it helps you uh, write the perfect uh, social media bio for your Twitter handle, or you could use it for, for other things. Um, and we were using AI to help us to give us a bunch of different examples of like, based off a few keywords, like if I'm in no code and I'm a builder mm-hmm. and, and this is, this is my niche, I can then select, uh, Twitter pro- bios as an example and input those two items. And then we've uh, integrated with open AI, uh, to then spit back some the perfect bios within the character limit of the Twitter bio. Um, since we launched it a few months ago, it's been used over 50,000 times. Um, but the thing that kind of blew me away was um, people have uh, have linked to this and shared it with all different types of uh, news, uh, you know, uh, you know, websites as well as communities. And so, we've, so we're getting all this organic traffic now to our site mm-hmm. because we kind of initially launched out there. So we've inadvertently hacked into the PR strategy of getting really valuable links just by launching a side product mm-hmm. and doing that. And we and we built that within within under thirty days. And that's what happened at Threado is. Um, and what really we accidentally discovered is that as we were launching this, you don't get a link attribution from Product Hunt. Product Hunt actually blocks it, so it's not like you get like a really valuable link back, which I think is kind of rude. Um, <laughs> How dare they? What what you do get is uh, lots of people will then begin to search through Google, and you'll get. And Neil Patel actually talks about this as number one way of growing right now. He believes are building side tools or side products because people will search for that or people will link from it. They will then go to your site. Google will see that as valuable traffic to your site. 
And then what will happen is, is um, um, on our page at the bottom is we would sh- sh- show other resources that were helpful, other side products, other maybe even pieces of content, long form blog content, or, or like a list of tools. And um, they would then click through to those and they would um, and spend a lot of time on the site. And so what happened was is those other resources we listed then began to rank on the first page of Google for whatever mm-hmm. the search terms are. So that blew us away because here we were yeah. just focused on launching immediate value. But what ended up happening is Google saw this traffic because we were doing it every 30 days. And you can go to sideproductlikegrowth.com, look at the case study. I have a screenshot from the founder of, of Threado that shows our, our organic search traffic like a stair-step climb every 30 days because of this. And the key pages were getting listed on the first page of Google. And so this allowed us to hack kind of this PR strategy uh, to build in a tremendous amount of long-term growth as well as short-term growth. So um, if distribution is the name of the game, if audience is a new oil, how are you going to stand out? Building free tools is not something that's ubiquitous yet. Mm-hmm. Creating great content, like kind of, uh, you know, uh, written content is becoming especially ubiquitous, especially like with Twitter threads and everything like that. It's becoming harder and harder to stand out because creating that content is becoming easier and easier. So I think it's a key strategy that I think would be critical um, unless you have some secret weapon of getting, you know, distribution uh, to your site um, that I would recommend at least exploring. Well, I think that's a mic drop. Uh, you've convinced me. You definitely make a compelling uh, argument, Michael. It's it's a new perspective to to consider. I think because you you look at a company and you oh what do they do and that can be your only your only thought on a company. But if you look at a company and what what is what made me look at the company, what drew me into the company, often more than you think, it can be a, a side product that you didn't even know uh, was related to it. And uh, I think that's that's pretty impactful, um, as you've said. Uh, I, I feel like that was very thorough and uh, robust uh, answer. Is there anything that we've kind of missed out uh, through throughout our discussion? Anything else you want to you want to leave on, or that we didn't cover before we close for the day? Yeah, just two last things that I think might be helpful. One is um, it's really hard to grab users' attention when they have when they have an itch to scratch when they have mm-hmm. that problem. That's the magic part of advertising, but that's expensive to do. So mm-hmm. if you provide value to somebody first and it's helpful, they're going to remember you when they have the itch to scratch and they're going to search you out directly instead of asking Google or, or like or going to whoever's spending the most marketing dollars. And the second thing is, is um, the mistakes I've seen founders make is they look at this as, as like a home run strategy. Like mm-hmm. they are trying to knock it out of the park with their first side product. Um, you, it, it, I've launched almost 20 of these and every time I'm blown away with like the ones that I didn't think were going to be like home run hits ended up, uh, being home run hits. So the ones yeah. that I thought were home runs were just kind of like single base hits. And so yeah. what it taught me was, is that you have to take just a, uh, just get a single, just get a, it's a base hit approach. Don't try, uh, don't try to put all this pressure on yourself because if, if you don't, then you're going to think, Oh, this is a failure. The key is, is a cumulative effect of mm-hmm. compounding effect of doing this month over month. And by the third or fifth month, you should start to see some game-changing kind of move-the-needle type of metrics. And, and either one of those becomes a hit or your SEO or organic reach really starts to – you start to see uh, that grow if you set it up correctly. So that's the, that's the type of like things that I've learned that I hope that are helpful for folks. Yeah, that's gr- that's great advice. I think that is relevant for small business owners, um, established yeah. companies, startups. Like anyone can really benefit from this, and even uh, an end user like me. I'm I'm thinking back over some of the products I use. Like, uh, oh, they, maybe those are side products. How did I get into that? How did I find that app? Exactly. How did I find that platform? Oh, I found it through that. It's like this is this is out there, but I don't think it's being talked about. Out enough, and now is really the time to jump on it before this becomes ubiquitous too. But I think we have a little bit of a window yeah. before that, so now is the time. Lowe's, like I was at, yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna cut you off, but like it's so funny you say that. Like you don't realize maybe you're using it, and that's the beauty of it. Like Lowe's is a home is a home development store near my house, and mm-hmm. I was trying to buy bolts for for my house. And I was like, and it's always confusing. Like how much mulch do I need? Mm-hmm. Cubic cubic inches? I don't know what the heck a cubic inch is, <laughs> and so. Lowe's actually has a cubic inch calculator tool that I found through Google. And through that, you know, if they offered another service or I could buy online, well, now I could like, that would be a great catch for me. So like, there's tons of these tools that are out there that I think we don't really think about yeah. in t- until later after the fact that, that we've been using. So it's kind of funny when you start to like 
oh, wow, I've actually, been, I've already been using tools like this. And, and then you can, then that's the exciting part. Cause then you're like, well, actually, how would this work for my startup? So hope it was helpful. I'm honored that, you, that I get a chance to talk with you and Sorry, it was it was a little robust, but one of these. No, this was this was great. There's a lot of good content here. Uh, it's really fascinating to think about, kind of peeling back the curtain a little bit and uh, seeing seeing products through this new perspective. Because uh, you're right, there are more out there than we probably think. Um, but this is definitely the time to capitalize on. So thank you so much for awesome. get, lending your expertise today. It was really awesome to to talk to you. Uh, we'll be sure to link to sideproductledgrowth.com uh, in the description, so people can come check out your site uh, for themselves and uh, hear more about this this really awesome strategy. So thanks a lot, Michael. Appreciate it. Cool. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thanks for Blue Capital. I'm honored to, to chat with you, Elliot. This is fun. Absolutely. All righty.